What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, and creator of SIBO Shortcut. In today's video, we're gonna discuss 10 misconceptions that a lot of people have when it comes to digestion and gut health. Obviously, there's always some exceptions to the rule and outliers when talking about this sort of topic, but for the most part, the following 10 concepts are myths. For each of them, I'll explain why this is the case. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these and whether you agree or disagree in the comment section below. The 10 myths we're going to talk about are number one, eating late at night causes weight gain. Two, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome is all in your head. Three, carbs are bad for you. Four, heartburn is from having too much stomach acid. Five, artificial sweeteners are better for you than sugar. Six, all probiotics are the same. Seven, digestive issues come solely from what you eat. Eight, there's a single best diet for everybody. Nine, eating spicy food causes ulcers. And 10, saturated fats are bad for you. Let's get started with number one. Eating late at night causes weight gain. There are definitely some potential issues with eating late at night, such as heartburn, trouble sleeping, and eating additional calories. For some people, eating a meal late at night can cause acid reflux when you eat and then go to lay down. Having to digest food while you're trying to sleep can also be a challenge because when your digestion's going, your core body temperature can increase, and that can signal to your body that it's time to be awake and not time to sleep. And then if you're consistently eating large meals at 10 p.m. instead of trying to go to sleep at 10 p.m., this is just potentially more calories consumed. However, if none of these three things apply to you, as in you don't get heartburn, you sleep well, and you're not eating in a calorie excess, eating late at night doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to gain weight. After a certain hour of the night, your body doesn't see food and then all of a sudden forget how to function and start storing everything you're eating as body fat. Myth number two is IBS is all in your head. The definition of IBS is usually described something like having digestive symptoms without any obvious outward signs of damage or disease to your digestive tract. While there may not be any obvious outward signs, that doesn't mean that everything is perfect. And while the condition IBS doesn't necessarily answer the question why you're feeling bad, IBS is definitely a legitimate medical condition. I had IBS for eight years back when I had small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and didn't know that I had it. And true to the definition of IBS, I had a lot of labs done and nobody found anything wrong with me ever because in my case, SIBO is not going to show up on any routine labs that you're going to do and doesn't show up on an endoscopy or a lot of other scans. Myth number three is carbs are bad for you. Stuff like this is always circulating. Carbohydrates are an extremely broad category of food. They include everything from table sugar to starchy pastas to vegetables, fruits, beans. Calling all carbohydrates the same is basically like calling all people the same. It doesn't make any sense to do. There's so much nuance in diet and carbohydrates when talking about which ones are healthy and which ones aren't. For most people, eating a wide variety of carbohydrate sources coming from whole foods is likely going to be the opposite of bad for you. In reality, it's probably going to assist you with having good gut health and a balanced microbiome. Myth number four, heartburn is caused by having too much stomach acid. This one is technically possible, but extremely uncommon for this to be the case. Most heartburn is actually caused by having too little stomach acid or having that stomach acid in the wrong place, which is up in the esophagus. Still, most people that go to the doctor with heartburn are typically prescribed some sort of acid blocking medication. And this may provide some temporary relief as the stomach acid that's still washing up into your esophagus is just a little bit less acidic than it used to be. However, ultimately, this isn't really doing anything to resolve the root cause and preventing that stomach acid from being up where it's not supposed to be. Myth number five, artificial sweeteners are better for your digestion than sugar. Artificial sweeteners are often thought to be the golden ticket to avoiding sweet drinks and food again without suffering the consequences of sugar. While they may be helpful for some people in controlling blood blood sugar and weight, these sweeteners do often cause a lot of digestive symptoms such as abdominal discomfort, gas, bloating. There's also a lot of evidence that suggests that these artificial sweeteners can have a negative impact on your gut microbiome, including causing leaky gut. Ultimately, in my personal opinion, I don't like real sugar or artificial sweeteners, and I don't think that using either of them regularly is a good option for your digestive health. Myth number six is all probiotics are the same. If you weren't feeling well and your doctor just told you to just go take a medication and didn't specify which one, you'd probably be like, hold on, we gotta clarify what I should be taking. It's the exact same thing with probiotics. There's several different classes of probiotics available, and within these classes, there's a lot of different types of species and even subspecies of probiotic. Intentionally choosing a probiotic based on what you're trying to accomplish specifically can make a drastic difference in the benefits that you experience or don't experience from it. Myth number seven is digestive issues are solely caused by what you choose to eat. There's no question that diet 
plays a massive role in digestive issues. This cannot be ignored. In reality, most people in the United States are eating diets really high in processed foods. However, there's also people that eat really healthy diets and not these processed foods are still having digestive issues. For the people that fall into the healthy foods category, there's still a lot of potential reasons why you can be having digestive problems. Some include chronic stress, overeating, eating too quickly, food sensitivities, parasites, SIBO like I had, candida, and a lot of other potential causes. Myth number eight, there's a single best diet for everybody. The second I hear the phrase, everybody needs to, my brain kind of just shuts off. People who've had good results with a particular diet are probably going to be pretty passionate and favorable toward that diet, which means they're probably going to tell you about it and want you to do the same thing. Chances are they probably just want you to feel better or maybe want you to buy something, let's be honest. While their intentions are likely good, no diet's going to be the best for everybody. Whether it's keto, carnivore, vegetarian, vegan, intermittent fasting, or dozens of other ones I could name. Everyone's body's different. Chances are you intuitively know which diet kind of helps you feel better and which ones don't because when you find something that works, you'll probably feel better and have more energy. Myth number nine, eating spicy food causes ulcers. Spicy food may definitely aggravate ulcers, but for the most part, ulcers are not caused by eating spicy foods. The stomach acid that gets pumped out in your stomach is almost as acidic as battery acid. You really think the lining of your stomach is going to be that thrown off by having a little bit of hot sauce? Probably not. The biggest cause of ulcers is actually a bacterial infection called Helicobacter pylori, also known as H. pylori. When this bacteria becomes overgrown, it can burrow into the lining of the stomach and small intestine. And this is what actually produces ulcers for the majority of people who have them. In addition to H. pylori, chronic use of anti-inflammatory medications such as NSAIDs, which include things like Advil, ibuprofen, Aleve, naproxen, is also a known cause of ulcers. However, the pure number of ulcers caused by these anti-inflammatories is nowhere near the number of ulcers caused by H. pylori. And last but not least, myth number 10 is saturated fat is bad for your digestion and gut health. This one kind of annoys me and without trying to sound like a conspiracy theorist, saturated fat just gets villainized a lot. It's most likely due to the fact that there's large food corporations that stand to make a ton of money by influencing your food decisions. They're so powerful that they can and have been for decades influencing government decisions and dietary recommendations, at least in the United States. One decision that they've had a big influence on is saturated fat versus unsaturated fat. Since these corporations do produce a lot of highly inflammatory unsaturated fats, not that all unsaturated fat is bad because it's definitely not. Some of these products I am talking about include soybean oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, and a lot of other processed highly inflammatory oils. And getting you to consume these makes them a lot of money. It's easier to get your dollars if they villainize things like saturated fat because then the alternative is their product. As I mentioned for carbohydrates, there's a lot of nuance to healthy fats as well. Some saturated fat is actually unhealthy, things like salami, bologna, hot dogs, while other types of saturated fat, such as red meat from whole sources, butter, and coconut oil are actually good for the majority of people. And there's a lot of healthy unsaturated fats as well. The quality of the food and the ingredients that are going into it is ultimately the biggest factor in whether a food is healthy or not. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe below to my channel. If you're new here, I post a new full length video every Monday in YouTube Shorts daily throughout the week. Since you watched till the end, I think you'll enjoy one of these two videos next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.